Good evening, brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Please pay respect to Buddha by saying his name three times before we start. Namo Sakya Mauni Buddha. Namo Sakya Mauni Buddha. Namo Sakya Mauni Buddha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. For people who knew me and for people who don't know me yet, I am a student, and my master is in Vietnam. His name is the Most Venerable Thanh Tử, and he teaches the Vietnamese Thiền, which is Chan in Chinese, Zen in Japanese, and meditation in the English language. And I'm here today to share with you uh, some of my learnings from my master and my elders. So today I would like to say firstly about impermanence. I think it is a very um, common word in our language, the Buddhist language, isn't it? Um, does anybody never heard about that word? So I don't need to say anything then. <laughs> so we, with my learning, I do three steps. The first one is uh, uh, realizing or understanding or knowing. Okay, so we all know about impermanence. So we move to the second step. The second step is uh, agree. Right? Because sometimes we understand, but we might not agree with that. Is it correct? Yes. So we understand that impermanence. Thing is impermanent. Everything is impermanent, including this body. Right? So I move to the second step. Do we agree? Yes? That's good. <laughs> so we finish the talk. <laughs> the third the step is uh, then how do we do about it? Right? We understand, we agree. And what are we going to do with that? We don't put it on the shelf, put it in the book, and just read it, and everybody talk about that. I know. And you can recite everything. The last step is practice. So I would like to share with you how I practice in our tradition, the Thien way. Is it all right? Everything is impermanent. Okay? <laughs> and in, Viet in Vietnam we have a saying that you cannot bathe twice in the same river. Is it clear translation? You cannot bathe twice in the same river. Why? Because after you bathe in that river, right, you get out and you come back. Is it the same current? No, isn't it? Realistically, today, we have the uh, affinity to get together, right? We are here today, uh, tonight, and the set, this atmosphere, this room, but maybe can we find the same, like the same tonight, the next time? No. Everything changed. When I was born, about that big, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know about that big. I think about a ruler, even shorter than a ruler. When my, my sis, my friends gave birth to her baby, she's now big, very tall. I couldn't hold her. I said that she might slip through my fingers. She's that little, right? So how big we are now, and we change. The impermanence apply to things and us, all right? And why impermanent? Because we change. 
And why we change? Because it is a formation of so many things together. That's why it's changing. Uh, if you know about the impermanence, do I need to tell you a story about impermanence? Yeah? You might hear it, but if you have heard it, please hear again. <laughs> in the ancient time, in our country, and same in China, there are, we had to study very hard. There are only four classes, the uh, officers, which is the scholars, the learners, uh, the uh, uh, peasants, and then the artisans, the crafts, you know, buildings, and, and then the last one is business. See how we were silly. Business should be the top, you know, but we did we put them, if you, if you are not an officer, if you cannot do everything, then you are business. Why? Because we don't trust the business. They lie, they cheat. And that's how the moral comes that way. So, but if you, are, and everyone can be an officer if you pass the exam, right? And the exam requires your 10 years of study, all right? So if you were born in a poor family, you cannot do that. You've got to be very rich to study. So this guy somehow in the village, they, he's quite intelligent, so he learned, and everybody support him. And after 10 years of study, the whole village sent him to the capital to sit for the exam with the hope that he pass it. And if he pass it, then he will become an officer. And that's good for the village. That is uh, an honor. So with all the gifts, the donations from the village, he went to the capital to sit for the exam. Unfortunately, he couldn't pass it. Right? He failed. And then when he failed, he f how does he feel? We can understand his feelings, can we? Yeah. He feels shame and disgrace, and he could not want, he did not want to go back to his village. So, but if he didn't go back to his village, where could he go? He couldn't go anywhere, right? So he wandered around, and then he was so hungry and thirsty and nearly collapsing. So he came to the house, and more or less collapsing. So they knew that he's now so close, but they don't have anything to give it to him apart from some uh, water. But they are boiling a pot. He saw that pot and he can smell that. But that pot, they cook uh, some little grain, yellow grain like cocos, cocos, something for the pigs, for the animals. But they said that wait until the pot is cooked, then they will give him some share. So he waited and then he saw desperate and then so he fell asleep. And in his sleep, then you can continue the story without me telling you. What did he see in his sleep? He saw that the past, the exam he could not pass, rewinded, isn't it? And he saw himself sitting in there. He saw himself doing very well. And he saw himself not only pass the exam, but top mark. And in our tradition, when you are top, you are the top mandarin, and you became the son-in-law of the king. Right? So he saw everything happening. He saw he's the king's son-in-law, he's the king's son-in-law, married to a beautiful princess, and get sent to somewhere to govern, and he's a good governor, and he did very, very well. And then, and then he had children with the princess, and then his uh, father, the king, had only one princess. So what happened? The father, the king, gave the uh, throne to him, and then he governed. But then he listened to people talking and to good ears, and he didn't use good people, and he used the wrong people. And then the war started, and then. Come on, continue the story. 
<laughs> this is a very familiar and every opera we do that. And everybody knew the story, yet we still watch it. Right? And yet we still follow that story. And what happened? He go to the war and front, confront the enemy. And what happened? He lost the war, he lost the battle, and he been, his wife, the, the queen, being their concubine, and his children being slave, and he get beheaded, right? And that is a story. So from, and then when he get beheaded, he was so in agony. He screamed and he called for help, and then he woke up to find that the ends beat him. Right? And at that moment, the pot is not boiled yet, he didn't have to wait for a certain time. So for the whole life, up and down, all the good things, the good paths, to the bad paths, just takes only how long does it take to boil, to boil the, the pot? Half an hour? Or one hour? It's just only that long. And that is a dream. And that is a life ups and downs. Are we the same? Our life, isn't it? Our life, is it like uh, that dream? Now we talk about the guy who cannot bathe twice in the river. That is a bathe in the river, right? Here we are bathing in the, the time, up and down, and we are dreaming with he, that guy, the failed uh, student, he dreams when he sleep. But are we dreaming with our eyes open? Isn't it? And because we are dreaming with our eyes open, that's why when things bad coming, we scream, that's how miserable I am, I suffer. And that's why you come here to listen to some talk. And we suffer that way. And then when we got something, we are happy. Everything for us, we are happy. Everything against us, we are not happy. And see how we are up and down, up and down, and carry like that until the last breath, still up and down. And still we don't know how to get it the permanent, the real, isn't it? That's why Buddha called this body is impermanent. But do we we understand, don't we, that this is impermanent because it is a composition of the four elements. Right? We learn it by heart. But do we practice it by heart? We understand, we agree, but do we practice it by heart? Because if we practice it, we said we learn it. Don't tell me everything is impermanent. When I get the pen and I see my doctor, he said, it will go. This is impermanent. I said, I know. Right? Yeah, but it will go. Everything will go. But I want it go now. <laughs> so impermanent. Right? But we agree. But how can we still forget? Because we don't practice it. We know that is impermanent. It doesn't last, it changes. It is a composition of these things. Why? Because we stick to this one is true. When Buddha said it's not true, everything which is impermanent, which is a formation of so many things together, they are not true. And that's why we, if we stick to that is true, we suffer. Because we don't see the truth from the phones. We take these phones as a true. Right? Do we need more stories to point out? <laughs> there is a story about uh, in our country, we have so many, uh, because people, they said they are Buddhist. They said they are Buddhist. Why? Because they come to the temple. When they see Buddha statue, they bow, right? They prostrate and they chant, they pray. And that's, they give donation and they believe that they are Buddhist. 
Right? Buddha said no. If you don't understand, if you don't practice, you are not Buddhist, even if you come and chant. So we need to learn and understand, agree, and practice. So why they are not Buddhist? Because they, um, alongside with, uh, they worship Buddha. Not, they see Buddha as a god, the supreme god. And lower than Buddha, there are some other gods. Like we have the god in the kitchen. Right? So there's a story of the kitchen god. Uh, in the village, there is, uh, they just put it up, a uh, kitchen god. And you know how the, the kitchen made of? It's not like here. In our country, we can take the three brick and we put the pot on, that is a kitchen. <laughs> so the kitchen god is only three brick. But somehow, there is some uh, god, some deities, lean on that, you know? And that's why that uh, kitchen god is a very powerful. He answered to your prayer. And that's why people in the village worship that kitchen god. One day, the ma one Zen master come, and he knew. And because that is a deity, meaning that he's already good in a way he practice. So it just because he leans on what? The three brick to show his power. So the master want to release him from that uh, prison, isn't it? So he come and he said, where does the power come from? These are the three bricks. If you know these are bricks, are impermanent. So he uses a staff to work on this uh, pot and that's December. And all to the villagers who are so afraid of that, why do they fear? Because they think that the God will pay revenge and that the master will be something happened to him, but rather nothing happened. But after that, when he left that hut, that, uh, that shrine, little shrine. He saw uh, someone look like a Mandarin officer come and bow respect to him and said, that, thank you for releasing me from my prison of that fame. For long, I've been leaning on that and stay in the circle of birth and death. Yeah. And for that, because to show the power, everybody uh, do offer him so many creatures, and meaning that he's commit a bit of a killing in there as well. They offer that. And for that power, I, and that is impermanent, I commit so much of that sins. And then now for your talk, I now been released. Do you get the point? Get the point here? Now, he is the deity. He leaned on the three bricks to show his uh, power. And because of that, he has to live in this world. And he has to live with the sufferings up and down of people coming and screaming and yelling and praying. If they get what they want, they give him some donation of the creatures. If they don't get what they want, they go and scream at that. Right? We human beings, what or where do we lean on? Where do we lean on? Or what do we lean on? To show that me exists, me power, me is right. Which one we lean on? Is it this body? And what is this body? A stinking bag of flesh and bone. <coughs> is it correct? Agree? If you don't agree, you can tell me. Right? So we lean on this one to show that I'm right. Huh? And I'm powerful. 
And if you don't agree with me, then I am in rage. You see that point? You see how impermanent and how we exercise our ignorance. So is it this one real us? Why do we learn the Buddhism for? Buddha teach us the true and the false. This one is not us. The real us got to be omnipresent on the time, isn't it? It got to be on the time. It got to be us. But this one, if this is us, so which one we see that is us? Which one? Now this, which one? The flesh or the bone or the blood or the vein or the skin? Are putting them on together, and if putting them on together, it is a bag full of sting, smell. Don't you tell me that you don't smell? <laughs> because if we don't smell, there's no perfume, you know, for men and women, isn't it? And someone doesn't know how to use it. They use it to uh, so much, and that's why that might irritate other people. Right? Because if too much smell is uh, too much perfume, it smells as well. Yeah? So we lean on that one to see that is uh, us. And if we see this one is uh, real us, and we have, uh, um, remember the, I don't know, are you familiar with the Heart Sutra? In the Heart Sutra, it says that when Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara practice profound the Prajna Paramita, he illuminates that the five skandhas are empty, and that's why he goes beyond all sufferings and difficulty. So, if you practice the Prajna Paramita, is a wisdom. If you practice the wisdom, you can see that the five scandals and what is the f what are the five scandals the five scandals is the body and the mind isn't it the form and what else feelings yeah thinking yeah formation and consciousness so the form is this body the feeling the thinking formation and consciousness is the mind and Buddha said, the body and the mind, they are empty of characteristics. Why? Because they are the formation. You know, the body is a formation of the four elements. The feeling, the thinking, the formation, and the consciousness is a form as well. You cannot feel without having some things, right? I cannot feel this one is smooth unless I touch it. So there is the me touching and there is a something for me to touch. So they are the formation. And the body is a formation of something, the conditions. That's why they are impermanent and not empty, because they don't last. And yet we still, and they are not true. They are not us. Yet we lean on it. For how long? Since we were born until now. Is it only that? Actually, before that. Before, before that. Before we were born. We <laughs> How do I say? We, this life is a continuing of another life. Now let's put it this way. This one, we take it because we are ignorant. That's why we take it as a true one. How do we live on our daily life? We treasure it. Do we? This body. Since we were born, the parents treasure it for us. And then when we know, and then we treasure, we nourish, we adore it, we groom it, we do everything for it. Isn't it? 
Not only that, if anyone does something against it, then we are not happy. Anything we don't gain for it, we are not happy. So since we were born now, until now, let's talk about this life, until now, every time, every day, every month, every year, we just do for it to be better, correct? Better than yesterday, and not only that, better than the neighbor, better than the friend, isn't it? If the friend's husband bought her something sparkling, right? And she show it to you. Quickly, you have to tell your husband, look, see how they love each other. Now you show your love to me. And she had one carat, then I have to have one point one. Isn't it just how our life is? Right? And if she wears something you see that is good, then you have to go to, if she goes to David Jones, you have to go to Maya or somewhere like that, isn't it? So that is how we do it. We do for our body and for our mind as well. My opinion got to be better, you have to obey it. And that's why the quarrel in the family. Right? The worst thing is, When the last breath exhale, right? We, for so many years, up to now, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, treasure this one, do everything for this one, fight, right? And for this one. But when the last breath exhale, What's going to become to this one? Into ashes. Right? Does it go with you? No. And while doing everything for this body, we might do a lot of karmic actions. Isn't it? Because when you fight for it, when you fight for it to be approved, you create some things, right? Compete with something, do something, kill something for this one to get the best. And we have done so many karmic actions. Now when the last breath exhale, this one go to ashes happily. Right? It says goodbye. Who get the responsibility of these karmic actions? You create the karma, isn't it? You do everything for it, but by the end, it's a goodbye to you, and you carry the karma to go to another life. Agree? Any question up to here? <laughs> So that's how we do. And so many, something like in our daily life, yet we still see this one is a true. Now talking about anger, your friend, or someone, or the boss, or your colleague, or your wife, or your husband, say something loud, irritated your ears, and you think that they swear at you. And when you heard something you don't agree to, and you see that, you cannot stand that, because that upset you, right? The swear. Does it upset you? Does it upset us? Of course, if I swear at you, when I upset you, yeah, upset. And some people even said that, so heavy, I cannot stand, so heavy, right? If you hear something, something not agree with your thinking or your expectation, how heavy is it? 
Can you take it and weigh it? Can we? After all, they are words. But if you see that is a swearing, you cannot stand. And you said, that made me headache, so heavy. But if you take it out and weigh it, can you weigh it? Can we weigh it? But yet we upset, we hurt. And when we hurt, we have stress and anxiety. Right? Is it that's happened to the stress and anxiety? Have I explained what stress means in Chinese character? Fun now and stress, the word fun, is composed by two characters. One is the head and one is the fire. The head is on fire. When you are stressful, is it the head on fire? And anxiety, the Chinese characters is very good. Anxiety, one word is the heart. And one word is something like a tight, like imprisoned. The heart is imprisoned. When you are anxious, is it the heart is like that? So tight, palpitation. So stress and anxiety is uh, the head is on fire and the heart is imprisoned. Who calls you that? And you put the blame on that this person yelling, screaming, swearing at me, and I cannot stand it, I cannot accept it, it's too heavy. I have stress and anxiety. And that person do it to you, not you. But if I ask you the question that that swearing, you said that you cannot stand it, take it out and weigh it, see how heavy it is. Can you do it? No. Can we? No, but still heavy in here and in here. Are we really, Buddha said, sentient beings, we are really ignorant. Now, let's put the other way around. The guy, whoever, whatever, met him swearing at you, right? He's as ignorant as us. We are all sentient beings. Agree? We are all students. If we are not students, we are already Buddha, right? So he or she or whoever or whatever swearing or upsetting us. Now, this one is a sentient being, ignorant sentient being, swearing at us. Which, which, who calls us stress and anxiety, right? Swearing at us. What does this one swearing at? <coughs> Is it this stinking body, flesh and bone? Isn't it? And that stinking body, flesh and bone, if you take every bit out, is it senseless and priceless? So that sentient being, ignorance, swearing at this sentient being, flesh and bone, why bother you and you cause you stress and anxiety? Do you see the point? Do I make sense? But we still keep being anxious and stressful because we see this one is a true. He swear at me and the me, the mind is so big. Now another point, okay? We've been practicing Buddhism or meditation, and Buddha taught us about the true and the false. This one we agree that is not true, right? Remember, this one is not true. We agree, don't we? The true is a real me, the Buddha nature, the diamond I forgot, long, 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 long time forgot, now try to wake up. All right? Anyone wake up with your diamond? Hold it tight. Okay? Now, so, long, long, long time we forgot, now we have it. Okay? How, anyone know that you have the diamond? We all know that we have the diamond, right? 
Hands up, anyone saw it? If you saw it, I will bow to you. Because if you saw it, then you saw something, not your diamond. If you saw it, if you see it, you see something, be careful. Don't go to someone who said, come to me and I teach you for three months, you will see your diamond. And that's wrong, because if the diamond is something to be, if you see the diamond, then that is something to be seen. You got it? And if something, then it is a form. And if it is a form, then it is impermanent. You got it? And us is permanent. So we agree that we have the diamond. We cannot see it. Where to see it? But we sense it. Got it? We sense it. By learning, by meditating, we somehow sense it. And to be honest, if in my meditation at every session, if I have five minutes with it, I consider that session is successful. Okay? <laughs> have you sensed it when you meditate? When you come to a bliss, a very calm, that is your true self. And if every session I have five minutes with that, so bliss, so success, so good, there's no word to describe. You cannot say successful because if you say successful, then there is unsuccessful. But apparently there are so many unsuccessful meditation sessions. Because if you don't pen here, pen there, you're fidgeting, fidgeting, and you think so many things, right? right? So that is how we sense it. We don't see it. It is not a form to be seen. Now back to our sentient being who swear at me. Okay. For how many years we've been practicing, we don't even sense it, right? How can that person know to swear at that one? You what the pot? And if he doesn't swear at that one, at the true one, he swear at this bunk, stinky bag of flesh and bone. And that doesn't bother the true nature at all. Do you get it? You get the point? And yet, if we don't practice profound, we keep entangling the forms in our daily life, then we keep going back and fro. The cycle of birth and death, up and down like the guy in the dream, the failed student, and living like that, when you are up, you are happy. When you are down, you are miserable and come to here and listen. And then you get out and up and happy and forget it. And then when you are miserable, and come back and listen and just like that. Until the end and go back again for another life and life and life. <laughs> so how miserable, isn't it? So if we understand and if we agree, put it into practice the practice. And in the first, back to the uh, Heart Sutra, the first sentence, when Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara practice profound, the Prajna Paramita, and I said Prajna Paramita is wisdom, which is our true nature. Practice profound. And if we say practice profound, then there is some practice shallow, isn't it? Isn't it? No, practice is practice. There's no weighing, as I said. You cannot weigh how heavy is profound and how light is shallow. Practice profound means you practice, 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 practice. What do you mean? What does it mean? Don't forget. And how can you practice without forgetting it? Every moment. Every moment, you treasure every moment to practice. We understand that is impermanence. We agree that is impermanence. We don't practice. And if we practice on and off, then the impermanence becomes permanent. And we treasure this 
bag of stinky flesh and bone. So every moment is a moment of practicing. Remember that this one is nothing than a bag full of flesh and bone. And if the person somehow they get out of the bed in the wrong side and they're not happy with you, they swear at you, see straight away that is impermanent because the next minute after that he will give you a cup of coffee and you just talk and smile, just like that. And there is no upsetting and no stress and no anxiety. So every moment, don't wait until the pain, because when I have the pain, I realize how my elder said. He said that practice now, don't wait until it's too late, because when the pain comes, what do you do? You fight with the pain. You forget everything, right? Let's practice now. Every now moment is a treasure moment to practice. And if we realize that, we see to the point, go deeper, deeper, see, ponder and contemplate that. Buddha, when he first uh, say, what is his first lecture about? And that is the misunderstanding for everybody. When they heard Buddhism, they said, ah, that is a pessimistic religion. Religion is wrong in one side, and pessimistic is more wrong. And why they said pessimistic? Because see, look, Buddha talked about sufferance. That is the first lecture, isn't it? The four truths. And in his four truths, the first one is sufferance. So why he talked about sufferance for? For us to know that is a sufferance, not to tell us living in sufferance. Because when we know that is sufferance, we, can, we don't need to live with sufferance. You got the point? So it's not pessimistic. Actually, it is a very optimistic. We have so many stories to see. Um, there is in Buddha's life, there's one Arahat, uh, no, one um, Bhikkhu. He learned Buddha, he learned the teachings. And then when he saw, you know, in, the, in India there is a pond legs with lotus. In Dublin, you it's very hard. I tried to grow it. I fell so many times, I gave up, you know. But in India, so beautiful lotus, and in our country as well, so many beautiful lotus. Remember, that's beautiful lotus. So he contemplated the leg with beautiful lotus. And then later he saw so many girls come and cut the lotus, because they cut them to go to the market to sell them. So he saw the cutting of the lotus. And then after that, some clumsy, they have to tie into bundles. And then the lotus from the pond beautifully there get into the basket and into the bundle and shift onto the, the carriage. And by doing so, there's so many torn, isn't it? And he's weakened. Everyone here click. Huh? He's awake, and when he's awake, he becomes arahat. He learns the impermanence that way. Anyone clicks? You become arahat. <laughs> huh? There is a story of a Zen master. There was one student, and if you have heard this story, please hear again. He come to seek enlightenment from a uh, Zen master and enlightened compared to us in the dark, the light and the dark. And what is the light? The light is the truth and we live in the forms and that's why we are in the dark. You got it? So he come to the teacher. Every time he asks the teacher a question, what is the essence of Buddhism? He got a swearing at him. And you know swearing? Yeah, swearing. And then he was so upset. He came back to his uh, hut and he learned more, he practiced more, practiced more. And then he come and ask her. He got another swearing. Every time like that, up to the point that he cannot haunt anymore. 
He got stress and anxiety. He couldn't believe that the master gave it to him. He put the blame on the master because the master swear at him. So by the end, finally, he said, that master, I come here, I beg you to teach me. I don't ask for swearing. And the teacher honed him like that and face to face and shouted at him, you call this swearing? And he awakened. Anyone awake? You heard it? Swearing. Because you counted. And that's, like I said before, so heavy to him. But can he put it out and weigh it? You got the point here? Yes or no? <laughs> if no, I will swear at you. <laughs> right? And if you call this swearing, you go to more lessons. So if we understand the true and the false, back to we understand, we agree, but when we practice, we forget. So try to remember. Now I give you one trick, or one a tip of how to remember, because we tend to forget, isn't it? If you ask your husband why he didn't do so, he answered to you, I forgot. If you ask your children, why don't you do like I told you, I forgot. Isn't it? The forget is at the tip of the tongue. So now when you forget to start being angry, then I tell you that. Before, when you are angry, do you know? When we start boiling, we know, don't we? We know. Or if we don't know, after we exit on our anger, we knew that we've been angry. Right? So either stage, now if you are at the last stage that after being angry, then you knew. Then you teach yourself to know before you exit the anger. Okay? And now if you are at the stage that you know before you exit the anger, you know, you hear, you sense the boiling. Now you remember the stinking back of flesh and bone. And you remember that before you boil, before this one start boiling, will you come? <coughs> will you boiling there? Here? Here is boiling. But before that, you were at the calm, <coughs> isn't it? That calm is the true you. So instead of Leaning on this stage, you lean on back to that one. Find back to that one and back to your true self. And remember that these are words. These wearing are only words. And actually they are echoes. Isn't it? And there's no, no way you catch it, and no way you can weigh them. And then back to yourself. And if you learn that, you can practice that for the rest of our life. And then be enlightened. <laughs> we don't have to go to another life. Because, remember, Whatever you do for this body, thinking flesh and bone, when it's a goodbye to you, it goes. And you hone the responsibility. And you have that karma to carry to your next life. That is a sentient being, the ignorant one. Now why don't we, when we see this one is a false one, now how can we practice? Don't say that, huh, it's now, it's phones, so I just ignore it. Don't do that, okay? Let it be staffed. Don't do it. That's wrong again, because we go to the extreme. All right? Don't go to the extreme. There is a story. Do I have time for another story? <laughs> One master, there is a student in a temple. He practiced. He's so serious, and he wants to be enlightened. So he copies 
all the actions, all things from the master he learned. So he sort of like uh, worship his master. So, but he's very good, he's serious, he learns and learns, he understands and he agrees, so he learns. Practice with the master. So one day, the master sent him in the ancient time, we don't have uh, email, right? So we have to send courier, a messenger. So the master sent him to another monastery. He begged the master not to send him because he thought that is a waste of how many times, how many years he's been practicing. He wanted to come to the end, right? So he begged the master. The master said, no, you go because you are a good boy. You go. He cannot refuse because you have to obey the master's order. Reluctantly and unhappily, he left the mountain to go. But at the door, his elder said, don't you worry, I come along with you. Oh, to his happy. But the, ma the elder said that now I come along with you. Now, as uh, soon as uh, we get out of this door, you have to drop everything from this inside. You go with me. Everything you don't understand, you can ask me. I can help you. I help you everything except five things. What are these five things? Taking meals. Taking meals meaning eating and drinking. All right? After taking meals, what do you do? Yeah, when you borrow things to nourish your body, you have to return. If you cannot return, you have to see the doctor. <laughs> okay? So, number one, number two, isn't it? Number one, number two, return. After that, dressing. Okay? The four thing. Taking meals, returning, dressing. The last one is carrying this stinking body. And up to that, he awakes. Anyone awake? You see the true and the false, right? Our true is omnipresent. We cannot see it, but we can. We sense it. It needs to lean to this body, but it is not this body. You get it? It is not this body. It leans on this body, so that we can realize, acknowledge it. But it is not this body. So if you ponder on that, we can do practice every day every moment and treasure every moment. When we encounter things, then we remember that the true us is omnipresent. Don't cloud it. There are five things which cloud or hinder us from going to that. What are these five? Greed, anger, Uh, no, that is the other. Uh, huh? This is anger. <laughs> um, yeah, and then what else? The five things. Sleeping. Yeah. I don't understand that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So these are five hindrances from uh, for us to not to see to our self. Do 
You see that? See the truth and the false? And that's what I want to share with you. Because I don't wait until too late to do it. Every now moment is a precious moment to treasure. Right? And if you can see that, you, we really can forgive and forget things and particularly forgive the friends, the people who intentionally and unintentionally hurt us. Because whether intentionally or unintentionally, they hurt the stinking back of flesh and bone, not this one. Just remember that we've been practicing for so long, we still don't get to that one yet. So how can that ignorance see that to swear at that? You got that one? Thank you very much. If you have any questions, we have time. Saru, Saru, Saru. Any question? If there is no question, I have some uh, information. I have talked at my temple on every Saturday in the afternoon from 2 to 4, and not tomorrow, but next week we start learning the uh, 10 pictures of the ox herding. That is the Mahayana way to show who is the real us and who is the false us, the running mind and the mind who is inside calm. So if you care for that, you can come on welcome. By the way, the temple is extending, so we have to move to the back, but we still have rooms for a few more people. And back to you. Thank you so much. Uh, can I just, uh, um, if we don't have any questions, so may we, should we transfer the merit before the announcement? Yeah. Do you want to do it in English or in uh, the Pali? How do you do it in here? How do you normally do it here? In English. So. If you just follow me, please. I vow that the merit and virtue from this will go everywhere, reach everyone, may all of us and all living beings, that we realize and practice the Buddha way. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you. <laughs>